Welcome to Christian Faith Ministries, where Drs. Greg and Deidre Thomas are the pastors. As we embrace the future together with so many uncertainties, we are here to help you survive and thrive during this pandemic and beyond. Join us today as we declare war on poverty and sickness. Hi, I'm Dr. Greg Thomas, and let's get into the Word of God. We're going to be talking about six essentials for biblical prosperity. So many people say, well, you know, God has nothing to say about making money or being prosperous. I'm telling you, my God, your righteousness, I mean, it adds up. It's got great recompense of reward. That's like workers' compensation. Amen. So it serves, amen, if you if you understand the biblical principles. And that's what we want to talk about. And I, I've entitled this Six Essentials, because I believe that there are many more. But as I ponder this, I think that there are some, some basic foundational principles that if we live by, we should spend our years and our life in prosperity. Let's get into the Word of God. Now, turn your Bibles with me. Father, I thank you right now for the teaching priest uh, to come alive with revelation knowledge. I can't do this without you. God, I ask that you just take the revelation off of the page and that you plant it in the hearts and in the minds uh, of the people that are listening. Now, Father, wherever they may be, glory to God around the globe. I ask God that you touch, that you deliver, that you restore, that you heal. God, that you rejuvenate your people. Now, Father, we praise you and we give you the glory in Jesus name. Say amen with me. Amen. Now, listen, turn your Bibles to third John and two. And it says, beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest what prosper and be in health. Now, if you, you, you can stop right there and, and that, that'll preach by itself because God is saying you're the beloved. And he's saying that his, his greatest wish is that you what you prosper, but he don't leave it there. He says that you also be in health. God does not get any glory out, out of you being sick. Why? Because your body is the temple that he will dwell in once you become born again. So God wants you, praise God, amen, to be healthy. Hallelujah. Some people say healthy and wealthy, amen. But health is wealth. I mean, it's a play on words. But praise God, according to scripture here, he wants you to prosper and he wants you to be in health. Now, not just physical health, but also in your mind. I was sharing with an apostle the other day from uh, the Sudan and uh, living in Dubai and we were talking about uh, biblical prosperity and that I said that you know he was just sharing about how important it is amen that we have we develop our spiritual life and I said yes but it's also important that we develop our physical amen the physical is just as important as the spiritual because God breathed himself into this physical amen and praise God so if you're going to have the Zoe kind of life amen you're going to have to have the God kind of life, you're going to have to have a body, glory to God, that is healthy, amen, so that when God occupies you, he's not limited to what he can do. And then you know, he says the signs and wonders will follow those other believers. So what is a sign and a wonder? Amen, sign and a wonder that you don't have to walk in diabetes and heart conditions and, and, and be broken down and crippled and arthritis and bursitis, just making adjustments. And the man, so praise God, that's what God is saying. So he says, be in health. Also in your mind, your mental capacity, even as your soul, see, and he says that that's going to happen as your soul. Your soul is where your mind, your will, your intellect and emotions, you line that up with the word of God. Now look at Matthew 633 and it says, but ye, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Now he's telling us, praise God, how important it is that we seek the kingdom, meaning the word of God. Amen. Because you can't do this in what you think and what you feel based upon your traditions of men or how you were raised in your different cultures. It's got to be based on the word of God. Amen. So the kingdom of God is not meat or drink, but righteousness, peace, joy. Amen. And the Holy Ghost. So you got to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his what? Righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Now, if you desire to be prosperous, my brothers and sisters, you can't do it without being a God seeker. Are you with me? And that's where we want to begin. I believe that there are six 
essentials for biblical prosperity, for living the prosperous life. Now that we should teach our children, amen, and 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 they teach their children, amen, on and on and on. And here, here's the list. Number one, you got to be a diligent seeker. Number two, you got to seek God, amen, in everything that you seek, amen. No matter what it is, don't take it for granted. I mean, everything God should be in it, amen. Now, number three, you got to seek his righteousness daily. And number four, keep his commandments. Do what the word of God says. You say, well, the, the, old, the old Testament commandments is not for the New Testament. Well, I don't care what you what camp you come out of or what you believe, but for, just do what the word of God says. Because the word of God is a book of promises. And praise God, with all the promises comes a principle. Amen. If you do the principle, he guarantees the promise. Amen. That he'll do for you. Amen. And then he says in here, number five, honor God with your wealth. Honor God with your your substance. Honor God with your offerings and tithes. That's how we as believers, that's what we do. We tithe. A tithe is, is, is a tip, but it don't stop there. Amen. Praise God. Your tithe could be 20%. Your tithe could be 99%. I know, praise God, billionaires in the kingdom. Praise God. Understand that what they seek is the wealth. Praise God. But it's to build the kingdom. The kingdom need money. When I was pastoring, praise God, full time in a church facility. Amen. We did a lot of kingdom projects, but we could have done much more, amen, if we had the money, amen, so praise God, you need the money, you pastors are listening to me right now, you need money, you got to teach your people biblical prosperity, amen, amen, I'll be glad to come and teach that to your, your people, just give me a holler, I'm telling you, it will change your church, glory to God, hallelujah, and here's, a, here's the last one, develop your faith, meaning your trust, in God, that whatever God says in his word, believe that God will do what God will do. What God says, God will do it. Now, let's get into the word of God. Here's number one. One of the first things that you must do is to live a, a lifestyle of prosperity. In order for you to live a lifestyle of prosperity, let me put this right. Praise God. It's to practice Diligence. Are you with me? Amen. So when you think of prosperity, you got to think about being diligent. Are you with me? Now, when the Bible refers to the word diligent, it's referring to your consistency and that you're being disciplined. Are you with me? So often in the kingdom, you see people, praise God, they want the prosperity, want this kingdom business, and they get excited and they shout for joy and all these great things, but they're not willing to be diligent. Because when you're committed to building the kingdom and using your sources, your resources to build the kingdom, to edify God, oh my God, uh, it, all hell's going to break loose. But you got to be faithful. And you're faithful in a few things. God will make you a rewarder. Oh, you don't hear me. Praise God. So you got to be diligent. Hallelujah. No matter what's going on all around you, you got to make up your mind that you're going to be disciplined to be diligent. Now, the definition of diligence I found in, in on Google, uh, in a Google search, it means to be careful and persistent. And it says to be careful with a persistent effort. A diligent person is a disciplined person. Say that with me. A diligent person is what is a disciplined person. Look at Deuteronomy 28 verse 1 and 2. It says, now it shall come to pass if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all his commandments, which I command you today, that the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall what? Come upon you. Are you with me? And overtake you. You got to remember that. Underline that. It will what? Come upon you. Why? Because you've been diligent. You've made, a, you made up your mind. You're going to be disciplined in doing the things of God because you obey. Amen. The voice of the Lord. Hallelujah. Your, your diligence in obeying God's voice. You hear God's voice. Hallelujah. And a voice of a stranger you're not going to follow. You know when God is speaking. You know, praise God, even now you're listening to the word of God. You hear the voice of God speaking to you in the midst of what I'm saying. Hallelujah. Now, there's some things that I'm going to point out in every one of these scriptures, at least the majority of them, that I believe are some key points as I teach you this. Now, when we talk about when he said to be diligent, number one, he says you got to be diligent and to obey. That's the wisdom keys. Here's another one. To observe carefully. 
Are, are you with me? And then he says that if you do those two things, it's going to overtake you. Listen to what God has to say in his word as well as uh, direct communication that he'll begin speaking to you through prayer. And as I told you earlier, he'll speak to you through the word of God. Amen. He'll bring revelation knowledge. He'll, In other words, is when what you know come in contact with what you didn't know and then it reveals, God reveals the truth to you in your heart, down in your belly. You know that you know, glory to God, that God is a healer. You know that you know, praise God, that God is a deliverer, that God is a, 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 a Pray that he'll break break yokes on your, your your behalf. Glory to God. He's a he's a yoke breaker is the word I was looking for. Oh my God. And so why? And then he says, pray that if you're doing those two things, if you diligently obey and you observe as you observe carefully, amen. Here's what happens. Praise God. The blessings of the Lord is just going to overtake you. All because you are a diligent observer. Hallelujah. Now, Proverbs 10. Three and four says the Lord will not allow the righteous to grow hungry. Uh, God will meet his needs, but he will reject and cast away the cravings of the wicked. Poor is he who works with a negligent and idle hand, but the hand of the diligent, he makes him rich. Are you with me? Now, the important thing about this is when we read this, we find that number one, the righteous is not going to go hungry. Are you with me? Who's the righteous? You. Amen. Number two, God will meet all your needs. Hallelujah. No matter what they are, he will, re he will, re but he will reject and cast away the cravings of the wicked ones. Poor is he who works with a negligence and idle hand, the Bible says, praise God, but the hand of the diligent makes him rich. Are you with me? Glory to God. So it's important that you learn how to be disciplined. Praise God. Now, when you're being diligent to pursue righteousness, God will see to it, hear me now, that you are fed continuously. Diligent makes one rich, prosperous in everything that he does. However, lack of diligence will cause you to come to poverty meaning a lack of prosperity. Now, Proverbs 13 and 4 says, the soul of a lazy man, praise God, desires and has nothing. Amen. He has the same desires, but he ain't going to have anything. But the soul of the diligent, that's the, that's the deal breaker. That's the difference. Amen. You committed to being disciplined. You committed to being diligent. He says, praise God, he's going to make him rich. Now, let's go to number two. Here's number two. And then the, the essential number two is to see God in everything you do. Oh my God. Somebody says, Dr. Greg, you, 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 you're, you're right in my kitchen right now. Yes, I am. You got everything that you do. I see it so often that people want, praise God, to see the blessings of the Lord. They want to walk in this prosperity. They want to walk in third John and two, beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper, but they're not willing, praise God, to, to, to see God in everything that they do. They have God over here and they have their worldly pleasures over here. See, King, but when we see God in everything, praise God, it goes along with our diligence in that seeking God should be a constant in our lives. It's not something we do some of the times. It's what we do all the time. It's like a blanket. It covers it all. Second Chronicles 31, 20 and 21 says, thus Ezekiel did throughout all Judah and he did what was good and he did what was right and faithful before the Lord his God. Are you with me? And in every work that he began in the service of the house of God, in the law and in the commandments to seek his God, he did it with what? All of his heart. And the Bible said, and so he prospered. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. So when you give God all everything you have, you seek God in everything that you do, and you do whatever you do, you do it with all that you have. You're not going to hold back. You're giving God everything you got in you. And God says, but for that, I'm going to make you prosper. Now, he did, we see it here, he did what? He did what was good in his heart. Amen. So what's in your heart? <laughs> you know, what, what, what's there? You know, I mean, you know, I think it's the bank, uh, Capital One, you know, it talks about what's in your heart, Samuel Jackson. I'm asking you right now, what's in your wallet? He says, but he said, what's in your heart? Hey man, he said, cause what's in your heart is praise God is going to be, hey man, it, it, that's what's going to be the determination of whether you're going to prosper or whether glory to God, you're going to be declared as one of those wicked persons that's just going to desire or that poor person that desires to be 
rich. Amen. The desire to be prosperous, but it ain't, it's like making noise and he, God don't even hear you. See, he hears you. He watches you by your integrity to be disciplined. See, Psalms 1, 1, 2, 3. It says, praise God, hallelujah. I love this, this, this scripture because in this passage here, you know, it talks about being, you know, a person who delights himself in the Lord. And he talks about the law of the Lord, meaning the word of the Lord, the word of God. I always tell people all the time that when you see the word, you just remember that he's talking about the Lord. So when you see the Lord, you know, you just drop the L and you see the word, you put the W there because it's the same in the beginning was the word and the word was with God. That's the Lord. And the word was God. Are you with me? So he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. So standing, he says that, praise God, that he, he says that person is standing as a sinner, being scornful and talking the advice of ungodly people are all things that keeps you from assessing, praise God, God's blessings of biblical wealth. But when you set your heart and you set your mind on what God the things you are constantly nourished, always fruitful, and whatever you do shall prosper because you have you have praise God made up in your mind that you're going to be diligent. You're going to delight yourself in what God says, not what praise God which you've been taught as a child. Amen. Now, let me tell you your 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 teachings that you get from your parents and all that is great. But praise God, the word of God supersedes everything else that they say. It's got to be based on the word of God if you're going to have biblical prosperity. Are you with me? Amen. It's got to line up with the word. Here's a second. The third is that you got to seek righteousness. Hallelujah. So I'm kind of building a case here, right? So praise God. I already told you, praise God, the, uh, you, you got to seek what? Seek God with everything that you do. Now he says how you do it. He said you got to seek righteousness. You got everything you do. You got to, how you're going to do it? By seeking righteousness. Now I love, praise God. Uh, and that, let me say this. So when you say righteous, you mean that you, you're going to have a right standing with God. No matter what, you know in your heart if you got a right standing with God. Every man wants to have a right standing with his father. Hallelujah. Now, Psalms 37, 30, 25 through, through 26 says, I have been young. This is David talking. And he says, and, I'm not, and, and, and now I'm old. Now listen, he said, yet, I love this. He said, have I not seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread? He is ever merciful and lended, and his seed is blessed. I like that because he's saying that you're not the you're not the tail, you're the lender, not the borrower. Are you with me? He's telling you that. I have been young, and he said too much to testimony, and now I'm, I'm old. I mean, I'm ready to leave this place. He said, I have not seen the righteous forsaken. He said, Listen to me. I know the difference. I know when I was not doing the right thing. I've seen the prosperity, praise God, that 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 I missed when I wasn't doing what was right, and when I got on the right track. He's testified. He said, I, I've seen God prosper. He said, and listen to me, praise God. He said, he says, I, I've been young and old, yet I've not seen the righteous forsaken. And then he says, and his seed begging bread. Now, seed can be two things. It could be his offsprings, uh -huh, the children out of his lions. And then he can be talking about the seed that he plant, meaning I told you that you plant four ways. You plant by what you say, by what you think, what you, what you give and how you live. Amen. And he's saying it's not going to go bankrupt. It's not going to return void. Now, the phrase or the state, the things that I want you to think about in this passage is not seeing the righteous forsaken. See, righteousness is a state of moral, write this down, uprightness that can only be achieved through belief in Jesus and God's plan for salvation. Now, being righteous doesn't mean you're perfect. Are you with me? But it does mean you follow God's ways and you believe in salvation. You are always seeking God's ways and living them out in your own life. Now, when you practice righteousness, write this down. Here's the things that you'll see. God will never forsake you. You won't be in poverty. Your children won't have to beg to meet their needs. You'll have the ability to be merciful, be merciful to others. You will be a lender and not a borrower. And your seed will be blessed, meaning it will multiply. Glory to God. It will flourish. Hallelujah. In the course of our God. Proverbs 8, 18 to 21. It says, riches and honor are with me says the Lord. Durable riches. I love this. Underline that word. Durable riches 
and righteousness. And he says, my fruit is better than gold, yea, than fine gold. Now, I like this because he says, my fruit. He, what fruit are you talking about, Dr. Greg? Are you talking about some produce when you go to Kroger's or to Winn-Dixie or to Albertsons? Or No, 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 no. I'm not talking about that kind of fruit. I'm talking about the fruit of the Spirit found in Galatians. Now, and so he says, he says, my fruit is better than gold. So what does he say? He's saying that your fruit, praise God, is better than gold. In other words, your fruit of the spirit is better than gold. Your 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 love is better than gold. Your joy is better than gold. Your peace, your forbearance, your kindness, your goodness, hallelujah, your faithfulness, your gentleness is better than gold. Hallelujah. And then he comes back and he says, My re my my revenue than 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 choice silver. He says the reward of being fruitful, praise God, the reward from the fruitfulness, praise God, in your personality, it has great benefit, is better than gold. And he says the revenue will come back to you better than fine silver. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. He says, I lead in the way of righteousness and in the midst of the paths of judgment that I may cause those that love me. To inherit substance, as that word substance, we'll talk about that over and over. That word substance in the biblical sense, praise God, in the Old Testament, it talks about your wealth, your prosperity. Oh my God, when the kings went out and they defeated other kingdoms, glory to God, they always inherit their substance. Praise God, it increased their substance. Praise God, hallelujah. And he says, I will fill their treasures with my substance. They were inherited substance, and I will fill their treasures treasures. Hallelujah. Now, I love the statement that when he says durable riches and, and righteousness uh, praise equals biblical wealth. Walking in God's ways for your uh, life brings riches and honor. This means riches and, and everything, not just material wealth. He leads you into righteousness. And when you follow his lead, you will have what? Durable riches. It will sustain, it will withstand the times. Hallelujah. Durable riches, wealth that is gotten in righteousness ways, in righteous ways, and it's, it's lasting wealth, in other words. And it will be an inheritance. Why is it a lasting? Because it's, a, it's, it's due to become an inheritance for your children's children. Can we say amen? Now here's number four. You got to keep his commandments. You got to keep his word. You got to walk in his ways. See, keeping God's word, keeping God's commandment, walking in his ways is a very important part of living uh, you, and, and, and the, the blessed life or allowing yourself to be led by the word of God, to be led by the Lord himself. You will never lack anything. First Kings 2 and 3, David inherits David's instructions to Solomon as he was dying, praise God, uh, is what, look what he said. He said, and keep the charge of the Lord your God walking in his ways and keeping his statutes, his commandments, his rules, his testimonies, as it is written in the law of Moses that you may prosper in all that you do. Hallelujah. And wherever you turn, hallelujah. Oh my God, hallelujah. The wisdom keys I see here is that you got to keep walking in his ways. And he says, if you do that, you're going to prosper. Hallelujah. When you do godly things and you follow godly ways, you are guaranteed to prosper, my brothers and sisters. Oh, my God. David gave these instructions to Solomon, who followed them and in, ended up being known as the wisest and the wealthiest man that ever lived. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, you are a candidate. Praise God to get what what, what, what Solomon got. Hallelujah. God wants to do that for you. Psalms 84, 11 to 12. For the Lord our God is a sun and a shield. The Lord will give grace. Oh my God and glory. And no good things will be with, he withhold from them that walk uprightly. He's a son and he's a shield. Walking uprightly in the ways of the Lord allows God himself to light you up like a sun uh, and protect you like a shield. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. He allows himself to extend 
extend his grace uh, and his glory will cover you. Oh, that you'll be known as a person of distinction because you know, they'll know you as a man or woman that walks in the glory of God. God bestows his glory upon you. Oh my God, hallelujah. Leviticus 26, 3 through 5 says, if you walk in my statutes and you keep my commandment and perform them. He says, not just walk in them, not just keep them, but do them. Hallelujah. Oh my God. He says, and then I will give you the rain and the season and the land shall yield its produce and the trees of the field shall yield their fruit. Your threshing shells shall last till the time of vintage and the vintage shall last till the time of sowing. You shall eat your bread to the full and dwell in the land safely. That's prosperity. Uh, he says, you got to walk in his statutes. Oh, if you do it, you're going to yield the fruit. Oh my God. Hallelujah. Here's number five. As I bring this to a close, you got to honor God with your wealth. Hallelujah. I told you earlier, praise God, that when you are a kingdom person, praise God, uh, glory to God, God wants to prosper you. So it's not for you to hoard upon yourself, but he wants you to be a blessing to the kingdom. See, God is a giver. So therefore he created you in his image. And that's the one thing that people miss. See, God is a giver and he created you in his image, in his likeness. So if you become like he is, you become a joyful giver. Hallelujah. We are made in the very image of God. So we are made to give like he gives. God knows we function at our best when we give of what we have and the rewards. Pray he rewards us for what we give. This is praise God. This is why I call it a cheerful giver. Hallelujah. Proverbs 10 22 says the blessing of the Lord brings wealth and it adds no sorrow to it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Proverbs 3 9 through 10. Honor the Lord praise you with your wealth and with the first fruit of all your increase. So shall your bonds be filled with plenty and thou presses shall burst out with new wine. The key words here, the wisdom keys is that there are, there are many ways to honor and, and the Lord thy God and, and worship and, and you can worship God, praise God, and honor him through your worship and through your good works and living upright. But this one specifically says to do it with your wealth. Do it with your substance. Hallelujah. Did you know that giving the first fruit, the tithe, is part of this, but also using your wealth, praise God, for kingdom building, to be a blessing to those that don't have. Oh, do you hear me? Deuteronomy, I love what it says. It says in Deuteronomy 8, 17 through 18, then you shall say in your heart, my power and the might of my hands have gained me this wealth, and you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the power to get wealth. He said, listen, that's okay for you to acknowledge that you had something to do with it, but you got to understand, I'm the one that gave you the power. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's the praise God is not your power, it's my power. He gives you the power to get wealth. Hallelujah. Proverbs uh, 11 25. Whoever brings blessing will be made rich, and he who waters will also be watered himself. Another form of giving is just being a blessing to others. Hallelujah. Which opens up God's ability to see to it that you are blessed. In return, I love what Malachi 3, 10 through 12 says. It says, bring, I just need a little bit more time than I normally take. So just bear with me for about another five minutes. Look, Malachi 3, 10, 12 says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house. And try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessings that there will not be enough to receive it. And will I will rebuke the devourer for your sake so that he will destroy the fruit of your ground, nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field, says the Lord of hosts. And all nations will call you blessed for you will be a delightful. And now listen to me. The thing that the wisdom keys here is that bring the tithes into the storehouse, meaning the church. Huh? Are you with me? Me? Notice you can't, and here's a, here's a wisdom key I want you to hold on to. This nugget will change your life. Yeah, amen. Praise God. You can't give a tithe. A tithe. You can't give a tithe. See, I can't give a tithe. So many people, God-fearing people that love God, what they've been doing, they've been giving a tithe. You're lying. You can't give a tithe. You can only return the tithe. He allows you to give an offering. Hallelujah. But you can't give a tithe. The tithe. Why? Because the 
tithe does not belong to you. You can't give something that don't belong to you. Hallelujah. The tithe does not belong to us. The tithe is holy. Hallelujah. It belongs to who? To God. So when you tell you say you're giving the tithe, you're lying. Now your tithe has become a curse to you. Oh my God, you didn't hear that, right? Now this is going to change your life. I preached this to my church. Praise God, I've taught it at other churches and people were so blessed. When they got it right, the church began to prosper and the people began to prosper. Now returning your tithe does four things. Write this down. It opens up the windows of heaven. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And it rebukes, number two, rebukes a devourer. Instead of living paycheck to paycheck, huh, you'll have more than enough. Hallelujah. And number three, it won't destroy what you have, your fruit or your harvest that is on the way. The vine. Hallelujah. And number four, others will call you blessed. They'll see how you prosper. Now, Second Chronicles 9, 6 through 7 says, but this I say, who who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And he who sows bountifully will also bountifully, will reap bountifully. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Can we say amen? And here's number six, I'm about to close. You got to develop your trust with God. That means your faith in God, no matter what. Trusting God to do what his word says glory to God, extremely important. It's essential. Hallelujah. If you can't trust God to live up to his word, then you, you praise God, you'll believe anything. you believe, praise God, you won't give him first place in your life. Hallelujah. James 1, 5 through 7 says, if you lack wisdom, let him ask God that give it to all men liberally and upbraid it not and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, not wavering, for he that wavers is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. For let not the man think he shall receive anything of the Lord. Here's the wisdom keys here. Hallelujah is it your gift. He gives to all men liberally and he he that wavers will not reap. Ask God right now for, and he'll give it to you. Ask him for wisdom. He'll ask him for understanding and he'll be liberal with you. You must ask in faith and not waver. Being unsure about God's word, his promises will not allow you to receive his liberal gift of biblical wealth. That he has for you. Matthew 6, 31, 33 says, Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or whether false shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. And here we come again. But seek what ye first, the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness. Hallelujah. Psalms 37, 3 through 5, and verse 11, trust in the Lord, do good, so, so shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight yourself also in, in him. He shall give thee the desires of your heart. I'm telling you today, God wants to give you that desire in your heart. When you trust, you have faith in God. Hallelujah. And God, when you delight in the word, you're com that means that you daily, you commune with God. Praise God and experience the joy that comes from that fellowship with him. And then when you commit, don't be double-minded. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Or oh, wishy-washy. Hallelujah. Don't be like a reed up and down, breaking the ground and all this stuff. Praise God. Be committed to do what God says because God's going to do what God's going to do. Oh, praise God. I pray you got something out of this. Oh, my God. Time just slipped by. I tried to get finished in 30 minutes. Praise God or less. But today I just went over about a couple of minutes. But today I hope you got Class, I pray that you go back and you study the word of God. You listen to this over and over again. Get your family, get your friends, get your business partners, get somebody and study this together. Follow the scriptures and talk about it and see how God's just going to multiply the blessings in your life. This is Dr. Greg Thomas signing off saying the spirit of greatness is upon you. The seed of greatness live within you. Go forth and do something great in somebody else's life. Today is a new day. Get these biblical, essential biblical principles. Get these secrets down in your belly. Get it in your heart. Get the revelation. Ask God to give you revelation and he'll give it to you. Until next time, remember, God loves you and so do I. We'll see you again next time. You've been listening to Christian Faith Ministries broadcast, where doctors Greg and Deidre Thomas are the pastors. 
If you've been blessed and desire to give, you need prayer, or simply want more information about upcoming events or training, go to cfmnola.org. Welcome to the IMLACA Basic Boot Camp. You may be asking the question, what does IMLACA stand for? IMLACA is the abbreviation for International Marketplace Leaders and Chaplaincy Academy. The purpose of launching IMLACA is because the world as we've known it is changing rapidly daily. When the coronavirus pandemic hit in 2019, the entire world shifted from an industrial way of doing things in the marketplace to a digital way. However, one thing that has not changed and will never change is people are suffering and the need for marketplace ministry leaders in business, government, and the church that are equipped, trained, and released as ordained men and women of God as chaplains around the world. This academy was created with you in mind. Yes, you. You've always wanted to be used by God, to be a servant leader in the marketplace, to pray for the sick, perform weddings, christenings, officiate over funerals, and much more. I believe our God has handpicked you for the IMLACA. This course is online, open book, self-paced, self-study, and self-test. Upon completion, you will participate and receive the following. One, certificate of completion. Two, You'll participate in an online or in-person ordination and graduation ceremony. By that time, you'll receive your ordination and graduation certificates, signet ring, chaplaincy badge, and lapel pin, digitally or by express mail.